Oh yeah, we're bike baby. We are bike like we never left. Yesterday's video was my wide receiver rankings one through 10 and we're bike to do 11 through 20 as we did the running back. So if you missed one through 10, link for that video is right down below. Go watch that first. If you miss the running bikes, go watch that even firstly first and then come bike for wide receiver 11 through 20 for fantasy football rankings this year. This was uh this was fun, man. There are a lot of there are a lot of fun wide receivers in this range that I'd be happy to have on my team. Again, a lot of moving parts here, a lot of QB changes, a lot of trades going on here. I would say that at least half, if not maybe eight to ten of the guys on this list have new quarterbacks that they're playing with. It's almost an eighty to ninety percent hit rate. So this should be a fun episode. It'll only be fun if y'all learn the fucking rules by now. That'd be to tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Okay, uh, number 11 on this list is Mr. A.J. Brown moving over to the Eagles. This is, you know, yet another situation in fantasy where you want to take the player at the level of his talent. It's just not something you could do with A.J. Brown and, and feel confident about doing it. So I look at him as a low-end wide receiver one uh, for the year. It's a, it's a bit of a tough sell to put him anything higher than, you know, the 10, 11, 12 range. He's dealt with a lot of lower body injuries thus far with the knee and the ankle and all that kind of stuff. It's starting to pile up a little bit where it's like putting this little space in my brain where every time I think about A.J. Brown, I'm like injury concern, injury concern, injury concern. And he moves from Tennessee to Philly. And, uh, you know, the narrative is that Philly's soup super fucking run heavy they went crazy run heavy over the end of the second half of last year it's also coming over from an offense where uh it was unbelievably run heavy as well just running through mr derrick henry while you know you, you trade for a guy like aj brown in philadelphia and uh you expect that to kind of like move the scale a little bit in terms of run to pass ratio it's still predominantly going to be a run first offense you know and what we saw from that with aj brown was pretty inconsistent play week in and week out while in Tennessee. He has these monster games, you know, where he pops off for eight and 170 and a touchdown or two. And that's just the player he is, right? He has the ability to just dominate a single fucking game. Any given Sunday, that's AJ Brown right there. We did just see a report come out today, though, that Shane Station, I don't know how to pronounce his name, never will, don't care, won't care. Uh, we'll continue calling plays in 2022. Now, they interesting note, like there's a very clear reason why Philly went run heavy in the second half of the year. Nick Sirianni, their head coach, gave play calling duties to this dude, Steve Steichen, over the second half of the year, and that's when they went run heavy. And now they're saying he is con going to continue to call plays. So, you know, I like to have given credit to Nick Sirianni to be like, you know, it was a good change up for him, you know, going more run heavy over the second half of the year, plays more to Jalen Hurts' strength, but he didn't really do that. Though, you know, as a leader, he gave away, he, he understood when it was time to outsource those duties when he wasn't doing them well. So I guess shout out Nick Sirianni, shout out, I don't know, shout out Action Bronson, shout out Pusha T. Shout out uh, Monster Energy. Shout out Truff Hot Sauce. Shout out, shout out, shouting out people. Who's the first person that says shout out to somebody? I don't fucking know. Who cares? So yeah, I mean, AJ Brown comes over and it's kind of a similar situation. He'll be competing with Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, which are without a doubt two of the better, if not best pass catching weapons that he's been competing for with targets. So I have a hard time buying into just Brown being sold to me as just like pure athleticism play. There are enough red flags that I'm a little bit hesitant to just, I don't think he'll fall to me a lot this year in drafts. That's kind of the way I'm looking at him. And on prize picks right now, they have his receiving yardage line at 1100 uh, and a half. So if he goes over 1100, you'd hit the over under it, hit the under. He has yet to do that, to hit that total in three years. And you could say on a per game basis, sure. But like longevity matters to me. I'm someone who looks at the bigger picture when it comes to players and fantasy football, like talent is one thing, opportunity, situation, efficiency, but longevity and just like consistency are also part of that pie, six to eight slices. They all matter equally. So that matters to me. He hasn't done it in three years. So they set the, they set the bar here coming over to a new team, run first offense. I got Brown at 11. I'm not overly excited to take him. Keenan Allen at 12 for the Chargers. I mean, just give me the guy attached to Justin Herbert, man. Is he going to average 10 yards per catch? Probably. He scored six receiving touchdowns in four of the last five years. That's probably what you can safely project again. But he's also caught 100 or more balls in four of the last five years. Like every other year, he's he's very, very safe, and I'd be happy with him on my fantasy team. I'm not going like crazy trying to draft him and target him. So once we get into wide receiver two range, starting at 13. I think there's a lot of dudes you could put here. I think there's a lot of dudes with enough uncertainty that like 
it feels like there's a giant tier from 13 all the way down to like 20 two to be honest with you i've got terry up at 13 playing for the commandos somehow carson wentz is an upgrade like you can really only say that when you have taylor heineke throwing you targets who is the walmart version of like gardner Minshew. uh but terry's involvement last year was just so so precious man i just wish some of the targets were accurate he was second in the nfl in deep targets fourth in air yards second in terms of air yard share on his team in the entire nfl but he had the third most unrealized air yards. Uh, his catchable target rate was 70th among wide receivers. His target accuracy, which takes into account like the depth of the field, 79th in the NFL. And, and you know, there's nothing about that that I need to quantify for y'all. It was painstakingly obvious if you watched him play last year. And listen, Carson Wentz might not have these numbers to improve much for Terry, but like, I want to believe it's so bad. And there's, you know, that corny saying, it's like, oh, it's the best quarterback he's ever played with. That shit, that piece of analysis got to have a hit rate of like fucking 4%. That shit never works. But here I am. Please, Carson, just let Terry flex one time for us. One time. I love Terry. I will continue to buy into the, uh, into the talent because I subjectively just love this dude. And we saw Carson Wentz just pepper Michael Pittman with targets. And that was probably a more run heavy offense than the Washington team will be. I know they want to be run heavy. That's why they keep investing into, you know, Gibson and McKissick and Brian Robinson. I, I mean, the Colts are just so fucking run heavy though, that it was hard to see a significant amount of targets in an offense like that. And, you know, it might be the same for Terry, but like, I, I want to be a part of the Terry breakout season because it is coming. It is coming. We just don't know when. The Michael Pittman breakout season, you could say it happened last year, but it's happening, happening. You know, it's like when you, you put the first happening is all uppercase. It's a happening, happening this year. Matt Ryan coming in, you know, literally the same note. Just jump off of like Heineke to Wentz isn't like even a quarter as valuable as Wentz to Matt Ryan this year for Indy. I've been an advocate of, of fading Matt Ryan for a couple of years, but him going to Indy, I absolutely love this. I think he is, he will save his legacy going to Indy, I might say. And I spent a ton of time talking about Michael Pittman and the reasons I love him going like very in depth on numbers and analytics. So if you want to hear that, I will link a video down below that just says like, me ranting about Michael Pittman. We'll put a timestamp for it. I think it was a must draft wide receiver video last week or something. I think he's going to be a monster in 2022. You can't have him high enough where I won't draft him. So he's my wide receiver 14. Right behind him, I have Hollywood Brown up at 15 for the Arizona Cardinals. He gets traded to Arizona, right? And the longer I let this trade simmer, the more I love it for Hollywood Brown. So he reunites with Kyler Murray. They played in college together. Don't forget, they were fucking magical together. We have DeAndre Hopkins out for six games. We have Christian Kirk now in Jacksonville. And the only thing the Cardinals offense did to mitigate losing those two pass catching weapons was to trade for Hollywood Brown. So he is going to implant himself as a significant, significant top receiving option for this offense like immediately. He should be every bit the target hog that he was in Baltimore. He got over nine targets per game in Baltimore last year. And we'll see a monster, monster jump for the first six weeks of the season with DeAndre Hopkins out. Of course, it'll taper off um, once Hopkins is back and he'll be the 1B probably to DeAndre Hopkins. But that six-week span, like I don't want to understate how significant of a chunk of the fantasy season like the first six weeks is. That's important. If Hollywood Brown does what I think he can in the first six weeks where he's having games of like six for 145 and two touchdowns or something like that, like those are week winning type weeks. And th those are worth having uh, at a very high cost because it gives you the high revenue on the bike end of it. Right. And say whatever you want about Kyler Murray, like despite what you think about this dude, go, go check out playerprofiler.com. And I think you're going to be really surprised at some of his numbers from last year. So go to player profiler, type in Kyler Murray, specifically, if you're looking at like the deep ball stuff, overall money throws, a pass requiring exceptional skill or athleticism, as well as critical throws executed in clutch moments, 45 of them, number one in the NFL last year, fourth in yards per attempt, seventh in air yards per attempt, top 10 accuracy rating, number one in true completion, uh, percentage, number one in deep ball completion percentage, number eight in pressure completion percentage, number four in clean pocket completion percentage. So it didn't matter if he had pressure or not. Number three, true passer rating, number seven in QBR, deep ball accuracy rating, number three, passer rating versus man, number two. Like, listen, I know the narrative about Kyler is like, there's been a little bit of heat taken off him, right? People turn the hose on and they're not as excited about Kyler anymore. It's not just short dump offs. I know people say he has trouble seeing over the middle of the field, downfield, like the numbers clear that up immediately for me so i'm very much in on this kyler hollywood stack right now for 2022 and you guys should absolutely be too and if you are and you want to put your money where your freaking mouth is go to prize picks go to prizepicks.com because they have hollywood brown's receiving line at 1050 
1050 for a 17 game season, six of which there's no D hop. I think he can leave the first six games of the season with 700 receiving yards. I think he could have 700. That would literally mean over the next 11 games, he would need to have 400 receiving yards. Like that is, to me, that's insane. That's one of the easiest bets on prize picks right now. Marquise Brown season long prop at 1050. And if you want to go take that one, there's a link down below that'll take you right to the app store to download it. You could use promo code BDGE when you deposit money on there to fucking win some money on this and they will double your deposit match. So if you put 10, you're going to have 20 to play with. If you put 40, you'll have 80 to play with, et cetera, et cetera. So go grab that Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, 1050 receiving line. And after you grab Hollywood Brown in your drafts, grab Mike Williams of the Chargers, man. I have, I, I've got a little bit of a spiel to go on for Mike Williams. Paint the picture. Mike Williams had kind of a tale of two seasons last year. When you look at the splits, man, the first five games were like, fuck. If you drafted him, you thought you had borderline like the wide receiver one overall. You said, oh, I have top five wide receiver for the rest of the season in fantasy. And then things cooled off, right? He went from averaging 20.3 half PPR fantasy points per game, first five games, down to sub 10. So things cooled off tremendously. The problem is here. I need y'all to listen to this and understand. This. You can't have it both ways. Everybody wants guys that explode some weeks. Like every third week, you have a massive 29-point game. But they also want consistency. You also want consistency out of your players. Here's the problem with that. Those types of players are the RB1, the RB2, the, the RB3, the wide receiver 1, 2, and 3 overall. You don't get explosion and consistency out of anyone outside of like the top three or four players at each position, all right? It just doesn't happen with 97% of fantasy football players. So you can't draft a player at wide receiver 15 and then get mad when they finish there or higher without the consistency that you wanted, okay? Because literally nobody is consistent in fantasy football. There are no players that are actually consistent, right? It's a 16-game sample size, and you want to try and decide how and when they score their points. Williams is a baller, okay? And he might come with some inconsistency. But you guys sit there and use blanket statements of like, oh, he's more consistent. Consistency is valuable. Show me one fucking study. Show me one thing in the world that actually proves that point other than you just saying like, that's not true. Give me the guy who's literally scoring more fantasy points at the end of the year. Guys, you'll never be able to pr predict consistency, okay? So what you want is the guy on your team that scored more fantasy points than the guy behind him, okay? You could talk about consistency, but at the end of the day, there's just no rhyme or reason to how fantasy football goes. If you've played in one single fantasy football league for one year, you understand there's no fucking rhyme or reason to it, okay? So Mike Williams, at the end of the year, will finish as a very, very good fantasy football player. He might not come with consistency, but he also might, right? Give me the downfield red zone possession threat for the 5,000-yard passer entering his prime in Justin Herbert in the fifth highest scoring offense. That passed the ball at the fifth highest rate last year. That had the single fastest paced offense in the NFL that goes for it every fucking fourth down. And you don't care whether or not he gets it, but you'd rather a player on a team that goes for it in every fourth down because that will eventually give you more possessions over the course of the year. And what happens when Herbert pops off and really hits his peak year where he has 45 passing touchdowns, 48 passing touchdowns. Williams is going to be scoring 12, 13, 14, even 15 of those touchdowns, and you don't want to miss out on that year. Huge fucking fan of Mike Williams this year, man. Couldn't draft him high enough. I'll tell you what else I'm a huge fucking fan of. Truff Hot Sauce. We're hitting you with bike-to-bike -bike videos yelling about Truff Hot Sauce because in case you forgot about it yesterday, I will not let it happen. I will not let you forget about Mike Williams. I will not let you forget about Truff Hot Sauce. Mike Williams, also more versatile than given credit for, same as Truff Hot Sauce, because they have pasta sauce. They have normal hot sauce. I'm not even good with hot sauce, but I love, they have like three or four different types of hot sauce. Some a little bit hotter than the other, some a little bit less hot than the other, but it's wonderful. Put it on your sandwiches, put it on your eggs, put it on your fucking pizza. It's really good. Put it on your pasta. They have hot mayonnaise as well. They've got truffle oil. Everything is truffle infused, but they have actual truffle olive oil that you can cook with, that you can put on your salads. They have everything covered for you. They got variety packs on their website on truff.com. If you get any of their sauces or if you get any of their variety packs, you'll be able to use it on pretty much any food. Any meal that you order, any food that you cook, you can put some version of truff on it, okay? It's maybe a little bit luxurious, but they're using the best ingredients. That's why it costs a little bit more. They don't price it up just to be assholes. People don't do that shit. You get what you pay for, okay? So go to truff.com and you're going to get a discount, okay? Promo code. BDGE out there. Use the link down below. It'll take you right there and make sure you're covered with the promo code and the free shipping and all that shit. But Truff, I can't say enough good about it. All right. Can't say enough good about Truff hot sauce. Can't say enough good about Allen Robinson going over to the Rams. Listen, A-Rob, he's still got the sauce, man. He's still got the sauce. It's been a minute since he actually cooked a meal in the kitchen. We gave him a little bit of Truff hot sauce. He's infusing Truff hot sauce into 2022 fantasy football.
a rob still got the sauce. It's been sitting in the fridge for a little while, but he's ready to use it, man. If you look at the numbers, I was I was actually really surprised when I started digging into who he was as a wide receiver in 2021. Because I'm like, yo, he was pretty fucking bad in Chicago, man. Was it a Chicago thing? Was it an A-Rob thing? Was it a quarterback play thing? What was it? Still in the 81st percentile in terms of success rate versus man coverage. 96th percentile versus press coverage and he saw press coverage a lot last year because i mean he was in chicago man 16.4 percent of his routes were against press 96 percentile 12.3 percent double team rate i'm not sure why the number's not there but regardless the the two numbers that are really high man and press are the ones that you want to know your alpha wide receivers can succeed against and he did so glaringly you go to his page on player profiler he had the uh his win rate versus man coverage was 14th so that's among like 130 wide receivers just route win rate overall was 17th overall like Good, good shit for Allen Robinson. I'm very much bike on him in this offense with Matt Stafford alongside Cooper Cup. You know, no more OBJ, no more Robert Woods. This is going to be a very pass heavy offense that runs through Cup and then Allen Robinson. And I want that bad. He might be the 1B, similar to Cortland Sutton, who I have at 18, though I don't think Sutton is the 1B here. I don't think he's the 1B. I think he is the 1A. And I, I'm starting to I'm starting to get to a suspect level of hype for my man Cortland Sutton. And I might look real dumb at the end of the year, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm super here for it. All right. I don't really care. Give me this fucking beast right here. 6'3, 218, wildly athletic. Two years removed from the ACL surgery. Okay. Last year he was one year off of it. Hate that. Two years removed. Now he's got Russell Wilson, man. Again, in the in the same video where I hyped up Michael Pittman, I talked about Cortland Sutton in depth, so make sure you go watch that at the end of this video. Let's fucking roll with Cortland, man. Who's in the Cortland cult? I need to know. If you're rolling with Cortland this year, get down in the comment section and make some fucking noise. Yell at me a little bit. I know I told you not to yell, but I want some yelling when it comes to Cortland Sutton, all right? So hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and then go yell about Cortland Sutton. Number 19 on this list, we have Deontay Johnson of Pittsburgh. He's making me, I'm a little bit uneasy about Deontay Johnson this year, to be honest with you. There's just, there's a little bit too much going on in Pittsburgh for me to feel like really confident drafting Deontay Johnson relative to what his actual talent is. They got Claypool, they got George Pickens now, Calvin Austin, uh, Pat Fryermuth had a little breakout, Najee Harris getting a ton of fucking targets. We don't know who the quarterback's going to be. If it's Pickett, does he have the same chemistry with Deontay that Big Ben have? If it's Trubisky, then all fucking bets are off and he's falling outside my top 20 for sure. He, he's similar to Terry McLaurin where it's like, you know, you, you know the talents there. And if, say, either of those guys were put in like the Stefan Diggs situation, either of them could very well perform and put up the production that Stefan Diggs did, man, but they're not. So we can't actually analyze them that way. So I have Deontay at 19. I have a feeling I might, you know, slip a little more and more and more on Deontay going down in my rankings as the offseason progresses. Love the player. Just, I don't know, the situation's fucking weird right now, as is Amari Cooper's, obviously, in Cleveland. He is my wide receiver 20 at the moment. There, I mean, there's realistically, listen, there's not a lot going on in Cleveland. They signed Njoku, but he hasn't done shit. They bring in David Bell, but he's also a rookie. I think he's going to have a fine rookie season. But pass catching wise, man, like Cooper slots in as the one immediately. And I don't think there's any reason why we can't see a uh, similar seasons like what will fuller did in 2020 right if you look at will fuller's number he only played 11 games obviously because he, he missed the end of that year but 16 game pace fuller 77 catches 1280 receiving yards 12 touchdowns if it's not watson for a while right deshaun watson this this whole analysis is based around deshaun watson if deshaun watson doesn't get a suspension sure uh, cooper's gonna fucking shoot up my rankings of course obviously if he's out for 8 10 12 weeks or some shit like that i'm obviously way way less excited about him and i'm thinking about mark cooper in like the same way i thought about him in Dallas, where he's like a low end wide receiver, too, probably gets you around a thousand yards between five to eight touchdowns. Not exciting, but still, uh, still usable, obviously, in your wide receiver, two, three flex spot for you. But a lot of changes here, obviously, as you see, you know, new quarterbacks, we got trades, we got rookie quarterbacks, we've got all, all types of shit going on here. So, not a lot of like consistency that we can bring from last year into this year, which makes these wide receivers in this range just so fucking exciting. And if you if you have strong takes on any of them, man, you can go on prize picks right now and grab a lot of the over underlines for the season long props. It's a lot, a lot of fun. And again, if you use promo code BDGE, you're going to get a 100% deposit match. You also might get another little prize email to you if you do so. So make sure you do it. Go check out Mr. Truth, the truth, right? That should be their name. They are the truth, but it is Truff hot sauce. Everything truffle infused, just gorgeous taste. Go to truff.com. Use the promo code that's down below. Use that link. And while you're down there, hit the button that looks like this, obviously. Watch the must draft wide receiver video that we got down there. Just stay on the channel. Just hang out with us. I love y'all. And I'll see you in next Friday's video. That came out weird. I'll see you in like two days, probably. I'm not going